So I've noticed this thing you do whenever I have a little excursion planned for myself, you secretly go out and plan one for yourself. And it's not until I'm away, like in the case of this week, I was in Utah. Where did I go? Tampa. Oh, okay. That was only, wait, you were back home though when I went to Tampa. Was it? No, you weren't. Oh. No. You called yeah. me and said, I'm going to Tampa tomorrow. And I was do you like, do that often? You do it all, every single time. You match me trip for trip. Whereas when you go out do of town, I? I'm just like, you know, walking around in my bedtime shorts all day. <laughs> <laughs> so I go when you go, but when I go, you stay. Is that what yeah. you're saying? So you go when you go and you go when I go. Oh, I go twice. Yeah. <laughs> So I have to factor that in whenever I'm doing a budget. Yeah. Uh -huh. Whenever I'm doing a budget for a trip, I have to factor in at least uh, however many more hundreds of dollars for you to do your trip huh. while I'm doing my trip. I got to think about this. Very convenient. Maybe. Yeah. Anyway, we uh, mentioned it just a second ago. We are doing Ogden, Utah today, just outside of Salt Lake City. Let's roll. Check the mic and make sure it sound right, boys. Hey listeners, ever wonder what it would be like to blow up your comfort zone at the tender age of 50? Well, we did just that. When our last kid went off to college, we hit the road in search of a new hometown. Now we bounce from city to city and bring you along for the ride. This is the Skip Town All-Stars podcast. What's up, All-Stars? Welcome back to another episode of Skip Town All-Stars. We are psyched to be coming to you today from the Podcast Doctor Studios in Orlando, Florida. What's up, Trixie? Oh, I'm doing great. I'm, I'm excited to be here. Yeah. There was no traffic on the road today. It was such a nice drive. It was, yeah. for sure. And we are here with our good friend, Phil, the podcast producer. Say hello, Phil. What is going on, guys? Today's going to be fun. And I don't know anything about Utah. I just know that it's kind of square, right? That's true. <laughs> it's kind of square. It's kind of square. In more okay. ways than one. <laughs> All right. Uh <-huh. laughs> <laughs> but we're going to have a lot of fun today because there's actually uh, there's actually a part of Utah that's uh, very invigorating. Uh, anybody who has listened to the show before knows that Salt Lake City is in my top five of places that I would think would make a great hometown. Yeah, I'm surprised it's still there. But you have gone back to visit quite often. I have. And um, you've been there a little bit more than I have. And um, what I want to know about is the latest city you visited, which is Ogden, because you were there, I think it was three years ago, yeah. and, and it was supposed to really explode. And here we are three years later, so I'm, I'm excited to hear. What do you like about Utah so much? What do I like about Utah? Because I have my thoughts on what I like, but what do you like? Well, I'm going to tell you what I like, but first... I want everybody out there to like and subscribe and go to our page. <laughs> <laughs> I want you to subscribe on YouTube, but make sure you're following us on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. Every little like and subscribe means a ton to a little mom and pop shop like us. It's true. It's true. I've yeah. said it before. When I'm on YouTube and people are saying like and subscribe, I'm like, oh, but now I know I don't do that anymore. Yeah. <laughs> I used to do that on YouTube, not anymore. So, uh, yeah. And if you like the show and you're in the car, play it for a friend. Maybe they'll like it, too. Yeah, absolutely. So back to our regularly scheduled program, <laughs> Ogden, Utah. Um, and, and what you like. And what I like. Uh, okay, so. Well, Utah in general. What I like about Utah in general is it's gorgeous. Uh, Salt Lake City is surprisingly uh, not as, like everybody seems to think it's sort of this curmudgeonly, like traditional conservative Mormon place. And it's absolutely not that at all. Uh, you have killer restaurants. You have the Utah Jazz, if you want to go see an NBA game. Uh, the campus there, the University of Utah, I forget how many students are up to now, 40K or 40, something, 000, like, something yeah. like that. Yeah. Um, they're always in the hunt for the Pac-12 uh, championship. Not so much this year, but generally the last few years have been very successful for the program. There's a vibrance that exudes from the top of the hill where the campus is all the way down into the city below the students. I love the fact that there is a young population there. There's an old population there. They have great medical facilities. Have I painted the picture? You have, but I think the one thing you left out, there are a lot of tattoo shops. There are okay, a lot of tattoo shops. That is not shops. something yeah. you would ever consider 
when you visit a city like Salt Lake. Yeah. You know, it, it comes to mind exactly how you painted the picture. As Phil said, you you feel like it's very square, square minded, yeah. square bodied, yeah. and uh, and then you land there, whether it's driving or I say land, you know, figuratively, right. not literally, and uh, you're surprised at how many people have tattoos and how many tattoo shops and piercing shops there are. Oh yeah, and the minute you get there, you get a tribal and a mountain bike. <laughs> 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 that is true. Yeah. Which one do you get first? Uh, I'm not sure because we haven't moved there, but uh, I think it's the mountain. Bike. I already have the ink, so I hope I get the mountain bike first. Okay. Yeah, that'd be fun times. So, uh, but uh, as everyone knows, Mia goes there. We've done several Salt Lake City episodes. This time around, I wanted to revisit Ogden, and the reason for that is when Mia and I were touring her campus. I heard from multiple people in 2020. In 2020. Yeah, right? That it was a 2019. 2020. Okay. I heard from multiple people that uh, Ogden was popping off. Uh huh. And I actually used that exact phrase with Phil. I said, Oh, we're going to talk about Ogden because it's supposed to pop off. And he's like, Really? Yeah. <laughs> was that news to you, Phil? <laughs> yeah, it was news to him. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't make any sense to me. Okay, so uh, <laughs> let me explain. When we went to visit, it was still sort of in a situation where the country was still reeling post pandemic, right? And so in March of 2020, was it March of 2020? I'm forgetting my pandemic years. Well, March of 2020. Oh, 2021. When it, started, when it started. I went there in 2021. Okay. In spring of 2021, when okay. things started opening back up again. And when I got to Ogden, there was nothing open. What made you even go? Because, I, like I said, when we got to Salt Lake City, everybody said, you know, I, I told people like, well, my wife and I are maybe interested in relocating one day. And more, I, at least four people said, well, you should check out Ogden because okay. even if you feel like the real estate is out of your reach here for what you want in Salt Lake City, it's only about 35 minutes up the road. Got it. Literally up the road. So it's north of Salt Lake City. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I said, OK, so when Mia and I were done doing her campus things, uh, I said, let's, you know, we have about seven hours to kill. Let's go and visit this place that everybody keeps talking about. Well, we got there and we were quickly greeted with a rundown railroad town. Are you serious? Uh, yeah. A lot of dilapidated uh, buildings. So where was this? Where was this happening, happening in Ogden? It was not happening at oh. all. The only thing I saw really at the time we were there in 2021 was uh, a bunch of construction trucks ripping up the main street area because I believe they were laying fiber. Oh. So, Well, that's a good sign generally. Promising, right? right? When I think Ogden, I think of the IRS because uh, they're out of Ogden. Like, yeah. remember? you would I, do I, I did not... I had to be reminded of that when I was preparing for this oh, show. Yeah, no. I totally forgot. Wait, what? Yeah. Oh, the IRS. Every is letter you get from the IRS, not every letter, but many letters you get or any sort of uh, correspondence comes from Ogden, Utah. Yeah. From oh. the IRS. Uh huh. Yeah. I know. Do you anyone ever want? Do you want to live that close to the IRS? I don't know. Whatever. But uh, yeah, I, when someone when you mentioned Ogden, I yeah. was like, oh, the IRS. It's just not something you want to think about when moving to a city. No, not at all. But at the time, it was so run down, and three years have gone by now, and I finally said to myself, you know what? Yeah, because you're coming up on three years in March. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Let's see if there's been any growth. Okay. I'm, I'm dying to know, because we have not talked about this trip since you've returned, because I wanted to hear about it yeah. firsthand here. And uh, what's the growth? I'm going to tell you in a minute, but let's talk about Ogden first. Oh, all we right. A bunch of facts. Leaving me on the edge of my I know, seat. No, I know. That's how I do it. Uh, Ogden, 35 to 40 minutes north of Salt Lake City, like I said. Population is around 87,000, so not a tiny town. Oh, that's actually big. Yeah. Okay. It's a pretty big area, too. Uh, it is located along the ridge of the Wasatch Mountain, the Wasatch Front Mountain Range. Uh, it's gorgeous. I mean, this mountain is huge. The area below it is sloped, but flat enough where you can kind of see the entire town up against the ridge as you're oh, pulling in. that's pretty. So, yeah. So, Ogden is, sits on the base of the mountain. It does, oh, yeah. okay. Sausage Mountain, that what you said? Uh, <laughs> Wasage. <laughs> so, I think it's W-A-S-A. Oh, I have it here. Hang on. Where did I put sausage it? Sausage is so sausage, much better. The sausage Mountain sausage is way mountain. better. Uh-huh. <laughs> That's what you Let's should title this it. episode, Sausage Mountain. Okay, <laughs> so that's what we'll call it. Uh -huh. uh, Wasage, W-A-S-A-T-C-H, front. Uh, I'll never be able to yeah, think of it the same. Yeah, now it's just Sausage Front. Uh-huh. Um, I love it. 
Uh, so it was a railroad town. It was not historically known as being Mormon for that reason, because, you know, all the rail workers coming in, they were just transient. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. So, um, in many recantations of what Ogden was like uh -huh. early on, uh, it sounds a lot like the movie HBO dead. I'm uh, sorry. The HBO series Deadwood. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, like lawless. Brothels, Almost like <laughs> saloons, you name it. Huh. Anything went. Yeah. In Ogden. So in Ogden, Ogden was a naughty place to go. Ogden was a naughty place to go. It was a gritty, grimy, blue, huh. blue collar, rail worker place to go. Okay. And um, a lot of brothels and gambling halls lining what is now the cute little 25th Street district. That's their historic district right there. Runs right through town. Okay. Um, and uh, among others, Brigham Young, naturally, Utah, yeah. Brigham Young University. Uh, but Brigham Young was, uh, he came in early and helped it develop into the railroad hub that it was. Um, but that, Brigham with, Young is not in <clears throat> Ogden, is it? Brigham Young, the university? Okay. No. Yeah. Okay. But he just Bra came Brigham out. Young's a dude. I know, but yeah. I'm thinking of the university because he came to Ogden and I'm like, is the university near no, Ogden? I think, okay. I think his thumbprint's all over that state. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Um, there was also a guy named William Glassman who became mayor around 1912. So for about 40, 50 years, this place was, you know, a den of vipers, <laughs> <laughs> for lack of a better word. And this guy came oh, in. You know, helped. it's where all the Mormon husbands snuck away, like in the evening. Oh, They're like, absolutely. I'm going to go over to Joe's and we're going to play poker. Absolutely. They were heading to Ogden. Yeah. So uh, around 1912, uh, William Glassman became mayor and helped clean it up by establishing the Businessmen's Protective Association. So basically- What is that for? It's all about commerce and they got rid of all of the prostitution and gambling. Oh. He was Mormon, Glassman oh. was Mormon. So, so the Mormon mob? The Mormon mob came in and, <laughs> and took away everyone's <laughs> That's fantastic. Took away everyone's alcohol and coffee. Wow, um, okay. Yeah. So that's kind of the story there. A stand up kind of guy, it seems the Glassman yeah. was. He was probably like the teenager where don't do that. Other kids yeah. came. Don't, like you should do oh, that. Here comes Glassman. Put away the cigarettes or whatever. Uh -huh. <laughs> so anyway, uh, tripping over my words. But, uh, you know, they all thought he was a stick in the mud oh, when the sure. gambling and the prostitution went away. He clearly was. Yeah. He was no fun. Yeah. He was he was the fun stopper. Yeah. So then World War II changed Ogden. And by like 1950, it became uh, sort of a... An, uh, defense industry, a lot of uh, construction going on, okay. a booming sort of environment. As a matter of fact, Northrop, Northrop Grumman is still there to this day. They have a presence. Yeah. Oh, wow. Like about 2,000 employees. Oh, that's, so, that's, that's a large amount to bring into a town. It is, yeah. for sure. And so uh, then with the addition of the highway connections, it continued to grow until the 70s. Okay. Uh, and Union Pacific Railroad and some other major companies in typical 70s fashion, decided, you know what? We're shutting down or we're moving to some other place. Sound oh, familiar? Yes, yes. Yeah. It's all the steel workers that had yeah. to leave small towns yeah. or even larger towns, yes. Yeah, Ogden is not in the Rust Belt, I don't believe, no. but it's a very Rust Belt story. Okay. So, uh, so that's is. kind of the backdrop there. And then there was lots of decay and decline, a lot of crime. But when an industry like that leaves, yeah. People generally don't come back. It's very, you're very hard pressed to move to an area that was once booming and now isn't. Yeah. Like, who wants to settle down in a place like that? So that's unfortunate. We see that across the board when we travel. Like, yeah. I mean, my, you know, Youngstown, Gary, yeah. Indiana. Yep. I mean, even Buffalo for a long time, you know, yeah. Cleveland. Um, so, so it sat pretty. I want to say empty, but I, that not not. not empty. I was just on a decline for decline. about 15, 20 years. Got it. And okay. then uh, in the nineties, the citizens actually had to rally to save their uh, downtown Egyptian theater, which I drove <gasps> oh, past. Okay. Still there to this day. Is it functioning? Is yes. it functioning theater? Yep. What they movie was playing? Uh, well, it's coming up on the holidays, so the Nutcracker is about to, you know. Oh, so it's, they use it as a there. ballet theater. Yeah, it's a theater theater. Uh, so I it. think maybe they. Play oh, it's a theater with the ends in R E. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Her, yes. Exactly. Yes. So. Um, it's fancy. Yeah, and then in the mid 2000s, so we're getting closer to lead. This is all leading somewhere. In the mid 2000s, an energetic mayor named Matthew Godfrey and other council members initiated redevelopment like a place called the Junction. It's a mixed use uh, oriented, transit oriented village 
uh, built on old rail yards with shops, eateries, oh. uh, pubs, residential spaces. And I drove past it. It reminded me a little bit. Remember when we were in Santa Fe? Um, there was a section of town that we walked that that greenway, that park or whatever. And there were yes. like, there were like, it seemed like there were newly built sort yes. of industrial looking, like the whole work live space thing has been happening in this country for about 10, 15 years, yes. 20 years. So it's like uh, lofts on top, stores yeah. on the bottom, that yeah. sort of thing. It looked like, it looked like, okay, yeah, this is formerly industrial, but now it's cool okay. kind of thing. So, so did you see a lot of artists walking around? Uh, yeah, I did actually. Yeah. Okay. It's very, uh, it's a it's a very hip area, actually. Okay, so yeah, we're okay, in, we're getting there. Go yeah, ahead. We're getting there. We're getting there. Uh, I'm, I'm on the edge of my seat, waiting to hear about Ogden. Yeah. So uh, this mayor also helped convert a one way street into a walkable boulevard. Oh, that's always linking nice. downtown to the Ogden River. Okay. Uh, and then there's an Ogden amphitheater now that wasn't there before. That you know concerts and all that. So I think in a few years you could probably go see Kesha. Or something. Okay, well, I don't listen to her, but okay. <laughs> I might be able to actually see Burt Kreischer. You probably would. Yeah, because he always know, plays. Playing... No, but he does play off cities. He doesn't always play like your he standard. Does. He doesn't go to like only Dallas. He'll, he will right. go to he a did smaller all the minor menu. league baseball yes. fields. I yes. That, it was, so. Yeah, so okay. It does. Not Kesha, but Burt Kreischer. Okay, great. Uh, so today, Ogden has several art walks, breweries, distilleries, both trendy and nostalgic restaurants. And um, how was it different? How is it different than two so, years ago or three years ago? I would say when Mia and I visited, there were probably three, maybe four restaurants open on the historic 25th uh, Street. Uh huh. Now I think it's probably it's got to be at least 15, 18. That's something a like huge that. leap for it three years. Dramatically different. Should we buy a house? Well, okay, so we're going to get to that in a second. That's crazy. See, we always miss it when people tell us we don't listen. Yeah. Yeah, so a little bit, but I'm gonna save that for the okay. end. You, Th this you're, this you're reminds me of, of Austin. It does, it does sound like the beginning of an Austin. Yeah. It's gotta be, yeah, I mean, we're talking Austin like 1997 at this yeah. point, just from <laughs> like size and everything, yeah. but uh, potential, there's a lot of potential there. I mean, that mayor also uh, helped rebrand Ogden as an outdoor recreation destination. Uh, and there are, I think, 36 something miles of hiking and mountain bike trails oh, there now. Wow. Yeah. Or 36 miles of paved trails. Oh, paved. Okay. Yeah. All right. And then that that's actually even, really doesn't nice. even count all the mountain bike trails right. and everything. Um, and then, uh, to date, Ogden has about 28 small to large tech companies. And what? Yeah. Like, like Wait. smaller software. I saw one, um, I forget the name of it. Uh, it's a software where if you are in charge of your city's volunteerism or what have mm -hmm. you, it's just a piece of software that you can use to track how your donations are going, how many hours people and have that was, volunteered. And their and all, company is in Ogden. And the company's based in Ogden, yeah. Um, that's just one out of however many. There's some larger ones. So it's ones. like under the radar like a small, it can turn into a small Silicon Valley. Well, it's not under the radar because, let me flip ahead. So the nerds have found this place and now they're taking over. Is the that what you're telling me? The nerds have found this place and taken over and uh, a bunch of outdoor people have found it too. Uh, Wall Street Journal. Oh no, named, I can't hear this. Named no. Ogden the center of outdoor sports gear in the United States and also named it Utah's hippest city. Oh, that's crazy. Yep. So uh, I looked around there about, this I don't know. This makes me so mad right now. There are like 10, 15 companies that make outdoor gear in this area. My favorite one is Stalker Outdoors. Okay. Um, How is it spelled? S-T-A-L-K-E-R? Yeah, just the way you thought. <laughs> it's the worst way possible. That's, that's, uh -huh. a, that's an awful name. <laughs> well, name. it's not because they make e-bikes to go bow hunting. So, oh, what? Yeah, so they make electric. They make electric. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna I know tell you're you. A, oh, come oh, on. Come Here's on. where Denise comes no. in. And she's a purist hunter. Okay. Go ahead. No. <laughs> okay. I cannot believe you just said that because that is exactly where I'm going with I knew, this. I knew you were gonna go no, there the minute no. I wrote this fact down. If you're gonna go hunting, get on those two feet and do the hard work. No you do shoes. not take an e-bike. You do not. Right. That is just wrong. No that shoes. Is, Wait yeah. a second. Hold on. You're you're talking to somebody who has no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so an e-bike right. is an electric bicycle. Uh huh. It so is. people are on an electric 
bicycle with a bow and arrow, and with electric. a bow and arrow, trying to hunt deer and other animals. Yes, that's exactly. Yeah, that's it. cheating, bro. This is that, it, it, that's cheating. It's totally cheating. Agreed. That's it's, like getting your what? Just go take your jeep. It is I'm totally with cheating. You. And, I am with in, you. In defense of stalker industries, <laughs> I'm butchering their name right now. In, in defense of stalker outdoors, I went to their website. Their bikes are badass, man. They're awesome. Here's what you I want to know. Something happened with this company. Somebody had an idea. Uh huh. You don't have an idea from nothing. So was there a hunter one day that said, oh, I'm getting tired of walking. I need a bike. Well, my like, truck where scares away come? all the deer. So what I need is a silent e-bike to get up the trail. Okay, I'm just picturing <laughs> Duck Dynasty on a bike. It's, I'm just picturing okay, Duck Dynasty on a bike. These bikes are no bike. joke. They're like $2,000 for just a two-wheeler, but I know you. How are you going to carry the deer I, or anything else? I, as I was just about to say, I know you. You like to have stuff. So there is actually a trike version <laughs> for $6,000. And does it pull a carriage or something or a, a trailer? Pull, they, It'll pull a trailer. If you go on the website, Phil can confirm. <gasps> If you go on the website, they actually do have add-on trailers that okay, you can no. attach to the back I'm of your so tricycle. I'm so against this on every yeah. single level. If you're a hiker, <laughs> freaking hike and walk that trail. I saw it. The bikes are camo, for starters, <laughs> or they're like uh, the military black. All right. Um, you guys want to see the website? Yeah. All right. Here we go. There we go. So <laughs> okay. go there and click on, uh, I think it's the second from the left. Yeah, right there. That Archery? One. Uh, no uh, doubt. No, go down. Mad down. bike? Right there. Yep, right there. All right, let's take a look. We're doing this. We're doing this live. <laughs> we're doing this live. So scroll down. Look at that. Look at that. Isn't that awesome? Okay, that's kind of cool. <laughs> <laughs> and he down. has a trailer. He has a trailer. Look at the trailer he he's a, pulling. He has a trailer. He's got a trailer on the back of that thing. And then scroll down, because then you're going to see the different models. They look awesome, don't they? I know, just know. And then the go down, no. and you'll see the tricycle. You can't, like Phil Look said. Look at that, babe. Two different tricycles. There's one with thin uh, thin width, and there's another one with a thicker uh, wheelbase. How about wow. that? I'm not buying it. Uh, if you're hunting, go hunt. You don't need a bike. Okay. I agree with Phil. It's cheating. Okay. Uh, find me a I hunter that's on a bike. Find me a hunter on a bike right now. We just saw one. But, so, like, are you supposed to... And it's one of the most popular companies in Ogden. How so. are you supposed to even do that? You're, you're pedaling and then you just... I agree. Like that's, no, you get... It's just to get you up there. That's all. It's like, so you're not exhausted and you actually have, you know, a little bit of energy left to pull the bow. Here's what I don't understand. Now we're going to go off on a tangent. <laughs> Hunters, uh -huh. when they hunt and they kill something, let's just use a deer, for instance, because it's large. Yeah. They usually park their truck, I thought, near where they're going to hunt so they can drag the carcass Reasonably to the near. truck. Yeah. What do you do with this bike and the trailer? Even though it has a trailer, how do you drag a deer on the trailer? That trailer didn't look like super durable. It looked I don't, like I don't know exactly what kind of game they're hunting up there. I presume there are deer. You think it's just so, ducks or no. birds? That's a that's a that's a that's a big basket. That's a lot of ducks you're going to take to fill that thing up. I don't I need I need more information. No. I, I need more information. I bet it's deer. Okay. So, uh, although it seems like it'd be big enough to just like, you know, plus you have the, like, hey, if you want to be an optimist and go out there with the full-blown trailer and everything, you have that option. <laughs> you're just going up the trail. You know what? If you're going to hike, just hike. Okay. Do well, not they're get not on... hiking. They're hunting. I'm sorry. If you're going to hunt, just hunt. <laughs> get on an e-bike. All right. Do, so, not, do not get on an e-bike. All right. So let me get through the rest of Ogden and then we can get to... Uh, Real estate and all that other stuff. Okay. Um, so anyway, a lot of good things popping off there, right? A lot of good things happening. Um, National Geographic magazine ranked it as a top 10 emerging ski town. Wow. Yeah. I've never heard anyone say, let's go to Ogden. So now you want to talk investment. You're like, ski town. Ooh, wait, I'm listening. Um, growth over the past three years has been less than 1%. They did have a boom right at the start of the pandemic, but it seemed to, seems to have waned, and I have my thoughts about that. Um, average household income, this varied wildly when I was looking. It's 51000 to 76000 I, I like That actually kind of makes sense because you have the artists who don't make much money, and then you have the tech people who make a lot of money. Yeah. So I think that's a, that's a very good – I'm not surprised by that actually is what I'm saying. Poverty rate is 14.25%. I don't know if that's high or not, but it seems high to me. I don't know, 14% below the poverty rate. In a state that's run with religious values, 
that's way high. They should be taking care of their people. Oh, okay. Look at you. I've always felt that way, though. <laughs> There's a lot of homeless people in, in Every... Utah, and I feel like, hey, if you're going to uh, preach it, then do the work and take care of your people. Yeah. Um, I think the national average for poverty is what? You don't. I thought I did. I don't know. You don't know. We're moving on. Okay. Median age. <laughs> <laughs> median age there, though, and this explains the, uh, you know, the 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 hippest, Utah's hippest city. Oh, and I what. think it's going to be young. How old do you think? Guess. The average age, 35. Very good. It's 33. Oh, I was really going to yeah. say 32. And if when, you want to know, I was going to say 32. And when I was first visiting there with Mia way back when, I had to think about it when I saw this stat. When I saw this stat and I said, oh, my gosh, everybody who told me to go to Ogden was young, was under the age of 35. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So, uh, yeah, that totally tracks. Um, Weber County sits at about 51 percent Mormon. OK, so it's one of the least versus uh, statewide. The yeah. average is 60 percent. It's true. Or it is, above. It's one of the that that makes sense yeah. because um, like Provo is like 75 oh, yeah. percent. Uh, Southern Utah. Yes. Forget about it. Salt Lake is probably higher than that. My guess is there's a lot of Mormons in Salt Lake. Yeah. So it's it's the place to go if you're not a Mormon, is what you're saying. Uh, I mean, other than Salt Lake City. Salt Lake City, we've talked about before. I know, but Salt Lake City probably, my, I don't know, we don't know the numbers on that. But um, do you th would say Salt Lake is higher than 51%? I would imagine Salt Lake is lower than 51% at this point. Huh. Between I don't the, know. I look between it up. the bazillion kids going there and the, University? the people from yeah. everywhere else that have moved in. Okay, so you have Ogden or Salt Lake. Just a guess, yeah. Um, sixty percent own their house in Ogden. Forty percent rent. Rent is about thirteen hundred dollars a month for an apartment. Okay, that's very reasonable. That's important. Yeah. Uh, median list price for a house is four hundred fifty thousand. It was oh, that's three high. years ago. Three years ago. Four years and twenty. Actually, not five years ago. Twenty eighteen. It was one hundred forty thousand. Oh my gosh. Yeah. It yeah. jumped three hundred thousand dollars in five years. Yep. Okay. But here's the thing. There are some downsides to the Ogden real estate market. Uh, average listing is 70 days as of this recording, as we're recording today. So if you put your house on the market, Ooh, you months. should expect to wait two months. What's okay. the what's the average, though? What, what, how often do people normally or how fast do they normally sell their house? That's the average, 70 yeah, days. 70 That's the no, average. just in general, like. Oh, on Everywhere. the average? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. We like we're probably a little spoiled. We came from Los Angeles oh. where our house was on the market for two days. Two days? Yeah. 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 I think the average <laughs> overall probably is my guess somewhere in the middle, probably like probably about three 30 weeks. Three days, maybe. Three weeks to yeah, yeah. something like that. I would guess three weeks to thirty days. I don't know. That's a Whoa. good question. Yeah. We're gonna have to follow up on that. LA was wow. two days and over asking and multiple offers. Yeah. And our house was tiny. Tiny. <laughs> 1,600 square feet. You don't feet. need to say tiny like that oh, so sorry. much. Where's that sorry. money coming from? You did very well for us. Thank you. I'm so <laughs> sorry. I did not mean it like that. Right. I'm just saying for the price it was. That's all. It was a very nice house. Uh, back to the homeless issue. Uh, Weber County homeless population actually decreased 15%. Oh, they're taking care of their people. 2020 to 2022. They're either taking care of their people or those people are leaving. So you it's better one of the apologize two. to those Mormons in Weber County. You know what? I will apologize when I know if the stat is they left because no one was taking care of them or they're being taken care of. Oh, geez. Now you're qualifying. Uh, let's move on. Touched by an Angel, that show. Oh, it was a hit. That I've never seen. Uh, it was a hit. It's yeah, like in the 1990s seasons or something yeah, crazy. They filmed there several times in the 90s. HBO's Big Love, naturally. Oh, uh-huh. The Mormon was, show. Yeah, had filmed there. Uh, several of their fictional businesses on the HBO show were filmed in Ogden. Ogden. And finally, The Postman, starring Kevin Costner. Remember this movie? It was a pocket apocalyptic thing where a guy still had to deliver the mail. I never saw the movie. I, I saw, saw a lot of Kevin Costner movies. I never saw yeah. that one. That was also filmed there in the 90s. Was that a comedy? I mean, no. it doesn't sound it like Here's your it. electric bill. <laughs> I don't have a house. <laughs> yeah. It's radioactive. I've got an arm growing out of my back, you loser. Uh, oh, my God. That does sound like a Here's a your yeah. monthly subscription to Men's Health. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well played, Phil. Well played. Um, okay. So uh, popular dining and pub options downtown. The top three were Brico Gastro Pub, Lucky Slice Pizza, uh -huh. which was just opening while I was there the morning okay. I visited. Uh, I did not get to check it out. Slackwater Pub and Pizzeria. Whiskey Street, Brewski's Bar, and Union Grill, just to name a few that okay. you report on 
Ogden. So how did you feel? Uh, I felt, and this is the most important thing, uh, I did feel at times like there has been enough change where I could live there. However, on a deeper dive on Zillow, um, I only found one property with one acre. Oh, so they're all tight. And it was a million dollars. Oh, okay, hold on. Yeah. There were so they're all tight. They're all there were close so together. Many houses. There okay. were so many houses. So a lot of track housing. A lot. I mean, it's like old, you know, like the same kind of track housing you see in the San Fernando Valley. Yeah. Like the, mm -hmm. the cottages and everything that were yeah. built. Here, though, because of the winter, they're brick. A lot of them are brick. So uh small lots, two bedrooms, one bath for 300 350 something like that. That's expensive. Um, tiny, tiny. I mean, we just so it's for me that knocks me out of the box. I yeah, no property. I couldn't live there, no property. Not even it's a, great that the that the community is making a bounce back and everything. There was a Santa's village. It looked really cute. Aww. So a lot of kids will have a great Christmas there. There's a lot going on. There's a lot to like about that community, especially if you're younger, you're outdoorsy. You only plan on having one kid. You don't need a four bedroom house, a three bedroom house. You don't need an acre. You don't care about that. Great place. Highly recommend. There seems to be a lot going on. It seems expensive. I don't know if I highly recommend for a two bedroom, one bath at $400,000. That sounds insane. Well, I didn't say that specifically like you may be able to do better there it just depends on how old the house is you're definitely going to find more bang for your buck just like everybody told me in salt lake city in ogden versus trying to find the same exact house in salt lake okay so you there's no property the houses aren't very big and the houses the heart house prices start at like three hundred thousand. Yeah. this sounds like austin this does literally sound, sound like yeah I just, I, I, it's so hard for me to wrap my head around these numbers. Yeah. How do young people afford this? Well, I mean, that's the thing. It's like, if you go to Salt Lake now, the same house is going to cost you $500,000. Yeah. So, and it's like, if I you know. drive around Salt Lake, the lots are just as big. The houses are just as big or small. I got a um, question for y'all though. Yeah. yeah. So I want to add a segment to the show is how many people look like me over there? Uh, that's a good oh, segment. That is a good question. A good I'm segment. glad you asked, Phil. <laughs> yes. Here we go. White alone, non-Hispanic is 46.5% of the population. Non-Hispanic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's white so people. Just white, white is white on rice. Okay. I know. Yeah. Okay. And then, um, <laughs> and then uh, Hispanic Latino is 32%. Wow. And wow. the rest are other minority groups. Uh, one thing, Phil, that you probably don't know about Utah is there are a lot of people of the Pacific Islander culture in Utah that are actually Mormon. You see a lot of Hawaiian kids or Polynesian kids playing oh. for Brigham Young, uh, occasionally University of Utah, all the, all the Utah states or whatever. Um, and that is because of all the missionary work that the Mormons have done in those regions mm. of the world over the years. So not uncommon at all. Um, I like that segment. And in, in answer to that, not, I've not, I've not seen very many black people in Utah. The only black in people Utah, I in saw Salt Lake. in Salt Lake, the only, okay. Did you see black people in, um, where were we? Well, Zion? This is just how many look like Zion. me. This isn't how many black people is James seen. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see? I see any, a lot of black I people. I saw no black people in Zion. I saw no black people in Salt Lake. The Wait, only black people is, I saw. This is the Ogden episode. Okay, okay. This is not Zion. I know. I know. We're, he asked the question. Okay, in Ogden. Did you see any black people personally? Black folks don't go vacation in the desert. Like who, Only white people do <laughs> that. That's we why do, they have mountain bikes we do with stupid trikes stuff. We and, do stupid and trailers. Stuff. <laughs> we do. We do weird <laughs> stuff right yes and you can say it in front of me you're not gonna hurt our feelings no we do weird stuff okay did you go back to the question at hand he wants to know any people uh, like him i mean i did see black folks i i was i didn't go to any restaurants while i was there or anything i did stop walking it. around the streets I stopped, yeah yeah a few a few black folks that's it. I would say it probably runs the uh, national. What's the national average? Is it like 13 percent? 13 percent. Yeah. OK. So, so you saw two black people. Wait, yeah. So maybe eight <laughs> percent. OK. You literally saw <laughs> maybe two less black, black folks than the average than the average American city. Yeah. Um, but uh, nonetheless, you know, it's uh, it's not as white as you thought it was going to be. Not with, uh, I have to tell you, I'm very surprised about Hispanic and Polynesian, but uh, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, we, I did a post one time about Salt Lake and the hotel that we stayed in, and somebody commented who's from the Dominican Republic, 
yeah, I don't see very many people like me there. <laughs> I was, I, 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 what could I say? I was like, yeah, you could be right. <laughs> but um, yeah. All right, so Ogden. Ogden, Oops. interesting place. Definitely, if you're an outdoors person. Okay, arty, techy, yeah. expensive. Yeah. Perfect. Go move. Yeah, totally. Um, so I don't know. I think that's going to do it for Ogden. What do you say? I think so. Yeah. All right. You got something you want to talk about? Do you have something you want to talk about? I do, but I've been talking for a while. So let's, uh, let's get to your topic. Okay. So speaking of houses and housing, I was thinking about this the other day because someone had asked me about our home in Los Angeles. Yeah. And we were just talking about how long it took to sell, the price we sold it for, the people we sold it to. And I made a comment, and I wonder how you feel about this. I said, after selling that house, I learned a lot. And one of the things I learned is I don't think I would necessarily necessarily go for top dollar in my next home sale. What does that mean? You wouldn't want to sell your house for as much as you could possibly get? Versus a wonderful buyer, meaning that they're going to love your house. They're going to take care of your house. They're going to treat it the way you did. Because since we sold our house, it's been robbed twice. <laughs> it has. That sweet house. Yeah. Uh, all the beautiful, beautiful. They tore land, out all the landscaping. All the beautiful. Yeah. It wasn't even money spent. It was years. They just let it go. Yeah. Years of me me cultivating the front yard, the backyard, spending hours and hours buying plants, planting every Mother's Day. Okay, this every is going to turn, turn into a therapy session. Yeah, and I, just, I can play some music. If some, yeah, I think some you sad should, because there's a tear. <laughs> a tear is going to start. Find something up. melodramatic. A, a violin. <laughs> <laughs> start crying. Everything died within three weeks. Everything. We're talking thousands of dollars, well, even though I said it yeah, wasn't you money. Don't water it, thousands it of dollars and years in the making, years in the making. We yeah. turned that into a backyard oasis. We did. They killed everything. Um, that hurt. My daughters cry. They see it on TikTok because somebody that bought it is on TikTok. Uh, my daughters cry when they see the house. They don't even want to drive by it. The front yard grass is dead. I look on Google, you know, satellite oh my God. once, once in a while, a house. little bit. I want to see if they like t are taking any better care of it since everything was dying and robbed. They're not. <laughs> So they're not really. Is no, it, still it looks under the same. Or it, no, it's no. It was oh. the inside was under construction. The outside was not under construction. They just remodeled oh. something, and the inside. Had they didn't been. even put like a desert yard in or anything. No, the, the grass the is brown. The drought free yard. No, the grass is brown. So all that to say, mm -hmm. that's, that's drought free. It does, in a way. You know what though? <laughs> <laughs> the money that they paid, the money that the girl paid. Uh huh. And we enjoy that money, and we've enjoyed it. We bought another house. <laughs> yeah, we have. I think I could have taken less and sold it to the family that had the son that wanted the guest house for their son. It was a hundred thousand dollars less their offer. Oh my God. Yeah, I thought about this money. a lot. But I thought about this that's a lot. That's generational wealth for some families. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. Yes. Two questions. Two. The the person who purchased your house, were they a millennial? Yes. Yes. Okay. 30, right. 30, 30, 32 years old. Second question. Why do you care? You're not gonna go back there and, and hang out. Thank you, Phil. <laughs> Okay, you know what? It's something about raising your kids in a home and living there for 20 years. And I don't know if you remember, but James has a friend who moved from Ventura County, which is Northern California, yeah. and he moved to Washington. Mm -hmm. And he would drive back and just go by his house once in a while when he was visiting Los Angeles. Yeah. It pained it pained Russell, he said. He yeah. saw how how poorly they were taking care of their house. And it's weird. Russell got top dollar too. Um, my brother and sister in law sold their house here in Florida, got top dollar for it. Yeah. Two years later, the roof was caved in. I remember it, your brother told me. Yeah. All the hard work, the beautiful ceramic tile broken. The house went into foreclosure. They trashed it. They they took out. They ripped out the cabinets. I know you get that money and you spend it and you're happy to spend it, but there is this part of you that well for me. Okay, I'm obviously talking about me because you're just happy to get the top dollar. I mean, it sucks. Uh, you know, when you see it or when I heard the story that, okay, so Phil, just to bring you up to speed because you don't know the story, uh, the house was robbed twice while guys were doing construction because no. they- No, Yes. That's actually not true, James. It was robbed while she was on tour and the house sat empty with no curtains Because on the front there were windows. construction workers coming and going. Nope, on tour? Not. You sold your house to Kesha? 
<laughs> we did sell our yes, <laughs> to catch it. Uh, we can't say who we sold it to because we. Why not? Because the ink's dry. No, we can. I'll find her. I'll <laughs> find. I'll find it on TikTok. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, because uh, because when we was in closing, my daughter posted something on her TikTok, and the lawyers came after us and immediately deleted it and said it's a security <clears throat> issue for this girl. Anyway, um, the house was not under construction when it got robbed. Do not say that. The house had already been. I know this because the neighbors call me. You don't talk to them. It was the construction workers who no, like, you're, knew how to get in and out of the house. You think you're Columbo and that you know it was Absolutely. the construction workers. You because do they were not going know out that. of the back gate and they nobody do. knows. Okay, go they ahead. They could have broken now, it. Let me hear the story you, <laughs> that I don't believe at all. Go on. The house was robbed twice, but you're saying it's the construction workers when there was no construction. The house was sitting empty. There were no curtains. There were no blinds. There was no alarm system. Okay, who everybody, cares? Everybody, because you could see it was a gallery. Okay. It was like free appliances, everybody. It was robbed everybody. twice. What's your point? It was robbed twice. My, I, my if point I had was run, If we nobody, had sold it to the family with the nice son, it wouldn't have been robbed mm -hmm. twice. The yard would not have burnt. The flowers in the backyard wouldn't look like. It looks like Agree. a total cement despair backyard like she ruined it the pool was green in her tiktok okay, you gotta the let pool it go. was green you gotta let it go because you know so you're what? happy to get top dollar i yeah i mean we we had a, yeah we okay, we, so we invested some money and we've been able to travel and start a podcast yeah as a matter of fact i'm pretty damn happy with okay, our decision yeah. selling again uh -huh. let's say we sell another house again uh-huh would you go for top dollar or person? i'm a complete and total whore okay. yes i will <laughs> It's maybe <laughs> maybe it's because how long did you guys live there? Twenty years. Yeah, so I don't have any sentimental value on any of the homes I ever lived in because right, who cares? It's right. a house to me, you know. Yeah, but you guys yeah. made you guys made your house a home because you guys raised three kids, and yeah. so I, I I completely understand. Phil, just stop it. You'd still go for top dollar. But I absolutely would go for top dollar because <laughs> because I'm not moving back to that. It's gone. It's yeah. done. They can destroy it, I, I, turn it into I, a 7-Eleven. I don't care. Put a highway over it. This isn't up. I know. And I <laughs> okay. say that, too. I am understating the sentimental factor because it does disappoint me that the backyard looks ratchet. But you got pictures, point. so you're good. Yeah, we got pictures and <laughs> we have our own memories and all that other stuff. But the I bottom love. line is, even if we went back to L.A., we wouldn't be going back to that house. So OK, I did. Uh, I did say that. I did say to Ellie, she can. The person that bought this house could literally burn it to the ground. She paid top dollar over asking cash. Yeah. She could burn it to the ground. But I, but honestly, in my in, in my heart of hearts, I would wish I had sold it to the family with the boy that wanted that as a guest house. Like I just think to myself, for a hundred thousand dollars less, they would have taken very good care of it. The pool wouldn't have turned green, the yard wouldn't be brown, it wouldn't have been broken into two You're times. You're not wrong. I'm not gonna do that again. So but you and I are gonna have to on our next sale. Then you're gonna have to start your own bank account. Okay. And you're gonna to have to buy your own properties, and you have to have your and own rental manager. And I'm gonna sell them to really nice people. You go ahead. So the way my the way my mind works sometimes, and I'm, I don't know if anybody watching thinks like this. Uh, do you guys believe in everything happens for a reason? I do. He does not. Okay, so it, I'm kind of both sides of the fence here, yeah. right? I, maybe this leads on a little spiritual side, but you said the house was robbed twice, right? Because no one was there. If that family was there and someone was actually robbing the house while they were there, something catastrophic could have happened. It's a good way to look at it, Phil. Yeah, but so so maybe you selling that house to the influencer or, or Kesha, <laughs> and she not being there, the, that house was going to get robbed regardless of who was going to be in it. So maybe because the family was not we, in there, and that that could have prevented something Phil, catastrophic from happening. To your true. point, that's one of the reasons we left LA because for the longest time Denise didn't feel safe, even yeah. in our even in our quiet little neighborhood. It was still Los Angeles, you know. Good and bad elements were able to access our neighborhood within two yeah. or three miles. And, you know, it's, you know, I mean, it's one of the reasons we sold it. It could have been robbed while I was in the back house on a Zoom, you True. know? I'm so. going to submit my my invoice to Phil for the therapy session. Okay. <laughs> Good. I am a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's true. Uh, so, okay. All right. So uh, I want to move on to a more important topic, and that is Cynthia Nixon. <laughs> Okay. Do you know who Cynthia okay. Nixon is? Is that from Sex in the City? It is. Wow. Yeah. You know who that is. Okay. I think yeah. you have to let everyone know who this woman is because no one's heard that name in 20 years. I know. And I had not either, except recently on Huffington Post, which okay. is actually the topic of my uh, discussion here. Uh, Cynthia Nixon, there was a story that Cynthia Nixon was joining a five day hunger strike in calls for a permanent ceasefire in the Israel Hamas war. 
Okay, well, she's going to die because she's already 25 pounds. So if you've ever seen her prior to this hunger strike, she's a toothpick. So is she's she really? dead. She's not even alive Well, right she's now. like 6'7". Oh. <laughs> yeah, she is. She's literally 6'7 and like 25 pounds. So she's dead now. No, How wait, many she's days that of, tall? She's no. Tall. She's, <laughs> she's, tall. she's like 5'11". Yeah, really? she is. Uh-huh. Yeah. I never realized like, that. Yeah. Okay. And she, so I she's mean, dead. Not a fan of the show. So, I mean, You're nothing, gonna be reading nothing her. against the show. Just never watched it. Um, yeah, she was. Uh, she announced her protest alongside other activists calling for a ceasefire this past Monday in the White House. Says, as the mother of Jewish children whose grandparents are Holocaust survivors, I have been asked by my son to use any voice I have to affirm as loudly as possible it never again means never again for anyone. My my discussion is I have so is much this. to say about this. You go Me first. Me too. Two things. Oh. Um, number one, I'm not sure what a five day hunger strike is going to do for anyone, especially when you're, I want to say, still an actress or a former actress or maybe an a, an entertainer who's not as much in the spotlight, right? And we get this all the time during uh, you know all of this country's discord during the 2020 and all that a lot of athletes LeBron James was one of them came out and everybody just said shut up and play basketball and all that like all the right wingers and all that other stuff but in this particular case I kind of think if I were a right winger reading this story who cares I'd kind of be like yeah just shut up yeah. seriously five days I just think to myself when celebrities use their platform inappropriately it's such a waste of a platform First of all, Cynthia Nixon, nobody even knows that name. I mean, we do because we we know uh Well, we're Gen sexist. Xers, so yeah. everybody so, knows that and name. And Phil does because Phil doesn't see Phil wasn't watching Rocky, he was watching <clears throat> Sex in the City. That's right. <laughs> so, I have I have a wife. She loves that show. <laughs> so uh Admit so, it, Phil, it was you. Uh huh. I, I did I did watch both seasons of the new one. <laughs> it's okay. I watch pretty what's a show I watch? Oh. Big Little Lies. Uh huh. Oh yeah. my gosh. I cannot have you watched that show on no. HBO? Uh-uh. I'm totally off subject here. <laughs> yeah. uh-uh. I've watched both seasons. Denise dipped out, and I yeah. was like, I can't wait to see what these uh-huh. do next. Is uh-huh. that is that cheating? Because like, you, if y'all if y'all pick a show together, you have to watch the show together. You can't like yeah. skip ahead. Yeah, that's like it that's is. like cheating, right? Oh yeah, but I top, I dropped out, so it wasn't cheating because he continued. Now if we're still together and he watches a show before I do, oh that's cheating. But yeah. I, since I dropped out, we're, we're fine. It's all fair. Well, she a, watches a, shows before me all the time. Like if I'm working or something, she's like, you know what? I'm not waiting, and I know you're just not going to watch it tonight you're going to be too tired so i'm just putting on and then five episodes later oh i have a con- she- i have a confession so my wife and i we have our shows right and uh-huh. sometimes she's really busy and i will Ooh. i will watch but here's here's the here's the thing that's really bad i will place the tracker back oh. to where we left oh. off that is so <laughs> deceitful <laughs> awesome. so i'm like oh is, i have no that, idea what's happening you know what <laughs> okay I, I i can tell you I can tell you point blank, if if I were to get caught doing that, that would be worse than having an OnlyFans account in my house. <laughs> you <laughs> Denise would be show. so mad. Well, <laughs> Phil, then do you act surprised in the moments you were supposed to act surprised that you originally act surprised in? Because now you're playing it back and you're sitting with her? Oh, like, yeah, of course. I'm a great actor. <laughs> <laughs> Not anymore, Phil. The cat's out of the bag. But uh, I just, so going back to that really quick, there's so many things that, Going back to who Cynthia Nixon is, and uh-huh. it, 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 she's not a household name anymore. Here she is on the screen. Thank you. Is. Yes. So she could have used that platform to volunteer somewhere. She could have been working for UNICEF. She could have been oh doing some rallies in her local town, wherever it is. I don't know if she. I think she's a New Yorker. Uh, really, a hunger strike. That's where you're going to take your platform. A hunger strike. Like I wonder. Did she, because she's not working, does she not have a publicist anymore? Like somebody didn't tell her bad idea. I heard she's like, doing it. Donate it your time like she's at a doing temple. at the behest of her son, who was like, Yeah, go you, donate your you time have at a, a temple. Yeah, do something. A hunger strike? I, I a respect strike. the fact that she wants to do something about it. And this is not about the Israeli Hamas conflict. It's not about Palestinian. Like it is. Her no, it story is. is. Her story is. I'm saying, my take on this has nothing to do with that. Like, I think it's an important subject. Don't get me wrong. I just said that she used this platform inappropriately. What I'm saying is she could have used it for this topic better. I just said she could donate her time at a temple. Yeah, I know you she could that. work for you. Uni- she could volunteer for UNICEF. She's going to go on a hunger strike. Like, this is dumb. Yeah, but. What is it? Who does it benefit? Who's benefiting? Nobody even knows who she is. Like, right. It just it it's seemed so, a little attention grabby to me. That was all. It was like she's like, hey, look, I'm standing up for this. And I'm going to not eat. Yeah. How about so, I'm going to donate a million dollars to the cause? That is doing something. Well, you got to have a million dollars. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Her, 40000 
okay, I'm donating 40,000 to this cause. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I look. mean, Sean Penn makes a statement. Jennifer Garner makes a statement. Uh, these are all people that are do gooders. You, you like you go like this to Sean Penn. Like, you know what, COVID, he was he was helping like get vaccines to California. He was, but then like Sean Penn of all people like randomly shows up in a war zone somewhere and it's like Okay. What is Sean Penn doing? Yeah, right he's like now? filming it. <laughs> yeah. It's like, okay. why are you here right now, Sean Penn? Okay, but he does things. Yeah. He actually does things. During the know. Katrina, Hurricane Katrina, he was there, boots on the ground. I don't know. Like, sure. Really? A hunger strike, Cynthia Nixon? I, I, do something better. All right. you, well, have you, you have y'all heard do of the better. term virtual, si virtue signaling? That's the term I was looking for. That's exactly it. I've read that before. Oh, virtue signaling. I, I think I know what that means yeah. by the words, but explain it. It's like, kind of like, uh, remember the there was like a supermodel during the George Floyd protests and all that. And she was standing out there yeah. in like, like, <laughs> like runway gear. Holding and, up her sign. Yeah, exactly. But it was just an like, Instagram moment. Exactly. So it's, it's virtue. Just a, it's, a it's like a photo op or virtue signaling. Look at me. I'm doing good. Yeah. Uh -huh. But it's you don't like, really care about the cause. Yeah. And they, it's usually encased in a layer of like, this is so sad. This is happening. But look at me. I'm paying attention to it. Or someone taking a selfie while donating money to a homeless person. Yeah, exactly. Like, like every single politician we know. Yeah. That's, that's <laughs> so, virtue signal. Good point. Um, so uh, my other two points are I could certainly probably benefit from a five-day fast. So maybe I should find some political conflict. Okay. Yeah. I could lose a few I'll pounds. report it for you. All right. Thank you. I appreciate it. And... Uh, the bigger topic, though, is, you know, I found this on Huffington Post, mm -hmm. and I'm sure it was in other, you know, outlets as well. But Huffington Post is this weird thing. Like when it first started, Ariana Huffington, right? Oh, she used to be good. Yeah. Uh -huh. She was she was such a journalist. And it's like I go to Huffington Post now and I in the midst of seeing these Cynthia Nixon type stories, uh, you know, you have like I'm a gay sheep herder and <laughs> I'm going to cut that. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's the clip. I'm a gay sheep herder. No, it's like I'm a gay sheep herder, and let me tell you how it it's cured my it alcoholism. Or, or you get like I found out my parents were really my aunt and uncle, and it totally cured my OCD. You so know, it's turned it's like, into like the London Sun or the National. It's Enquirer. the weirdest stories on there. Like their personal. If you read, if you dip into their personal stories, who? Oh, it's that's like a and. I hesitate to say because, you know, like you can write those and submit them yourself, Phil. If mm -hmm. you wanted to write such an article, you could. Mm -hmm. I say use as much word salad for your headline as you can because that seems to be what resonates and gets you on the front page. But um, I don't think you get paid for that. But I, I so I would say we should do a Skip Town Travel All Stars, uh, Skip Town All Stars Travel blog and try and get it on Huffington Post. We wouldn't get paid, but I'd be curious to see like what we could put Ooh, in there to, I think between, to make it onto the front page would be fun. Oh, the three of us can come up with some really good crazy you stories. Should, yeah. I went to Ogden and counted all the black people on one hand. <laughs> That's it. That that, cu you that already, cured my cavities. <laughs> he catches on quickly. <laughs> oh, we're going to be a hit on Huffington Post. We are. We are. Uh, so anyway, I don't know. That's the thing. I, I'm just like when I and, you know, do you know Drudge Report? Of Phil? course. Yes. OK, good. So, but you worked in media. Not everybody your age knows Drudge Report. No. Maybe you do, because you, uh, we talked about this in our last episode. Uh, you weren't really kids of the Cold War, which is why you never saw Rocky IV. No. No, still, Rocky. Any Rockies. Any, he any never any saw Rockies. any Rockies. But, um, Zero Rockies. But, but you were more kids of like the Iraq War and 9-11 and all that other stuff, right? Correct. So naturally, that's your, that's the lens through which you see sort of yeah. know, American conflict or whatever. Um, but uh, I don't forget. The Drudge Report. Oh, yeah, the Drudge Report. And so, uh, <laughs> waiting, <laughs> waiting. And so anyway, the Drudge Report like blew up after 9-11. Like it was. I, what I, is the Drudge I Report? Can you please? Can you Judge please? Report is a website launched by Matt Drudge right around the time of the, it wasn't 9-11, it was the Clinton impeachment trials. Okay, is he a conservative or He's a um, Historically, liberal. mostly conservative. Okay. But- sort of couched in they play it both ways but leaning conservative for okay. sure was definitely on the on the on the war path to get clinton out of office at the okay. time so why do you bring it was this definitely up? because huffington post is now drudge report like it's the same but liberal. thing if you 
yeah, ultra liberal, of course, and that's fine. Did the but, Georgia but Point have the stupid layout, stories? Like if, you, if you look, yes, absolutely. <laughs> so if you lay out one versus the other, the only thing different is the font. <laughs> it's like like Huffington Post uses red hat headlines now like Drudge Report used to do blue text uh, like it's weird it's the weirdest thing so it's Drudge like, Report was conservative and had crazy stories yeah. and the Huffington Post is like leans liberal Huffington and has crazy Post stories. is a new Drudge Report that's the more for the, the liberals story. yes honey yes because you just you said it three it, times because you're saying just Drudge Report I'm like no it's conservative <laughs> yeah okay I'm saying thematically aesthetically Got it's it. the same okay that's all all right. And that's why you get these stories, because they are ultra liberal. So Cynthia Nixon had her moment last week. That's all I got. Done. God, I got that off my chest. <laughs> I'm glad you did, too. I'm glad you did, too. You ready to wrap this up? I am. All right. Take them out. Empty nest, full tank. See you guys next week. Check the mic and make sure it sound right, boys.